satisfy all your uh, needs. Uh, you see. So the agreement is good because uh, we need uh, security. I think it's very important for us as a newborn nation. We need to, 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 to be stable. Without security, we will not do development. You see, I think this is what we should know. We have to come up and develop our, the, the, the country. And this one, we need to be in peace with the region. You see, I think nothing bad in it there. Uh, resumption of the oil uh, uh, flow uh, through uh, Port Sudan. I think also we need it for our economic development. You see, so for us to evolve, for us to uh, build schools, hospitals, roads, and all this, we need money. And that money is from the oil. So I think there's nothing bad in it. The border buffer zones is only to let the international community, I mean, the, the, the border demarcation to, to be made. You see, that is the reason for buffer zone. It does not mean that this buffer zone is already the border. No. You see, it's only the guns which are not needed there. And after the, 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 the demarcation is done, uh, here, of course, the, the, the two parties will go, and if you, you, are, you don't accept it, you will not accept it. It's not binding on, 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 on us. So the whole agreement, I think, uh, is a good agreement which we should really uh, accept. Uh, and I don't see why, like, the issue of uh, four freedoms. People are fearing about it. And all of you are asked for here, the Jalaba here, they are here in, the, in Juba. You see, it's we now we have our land, we have all the migration, is ours, and all that. If at all that they are coming to buy the land, who, who sold it? Then it is we. If we see ourselves, we are cheap to that extent that we can uh, we can be bought or we can sell all our land, a foreigner will come uh, empty handed without any force and come and and, 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 and and take over our land, then who is to be blamed now? Is the leadership to be blamed or we? Mm -hmm. You see. Secondly, we have some students who have properties in Khartoum. We have been part of one country. Don't we want them also, these are our brothers, to benefit from the uh, uh, properties which are there? I think uh, there is a need because these are some students. They should also benefit from this. So I, I see uh, this issue is what people have been talking of. Uh, when some people bring an example of uh, Israel, that is how the, the, the Israel uh, took over the Jewish, uh, I mean the Palestinian uh, uh, land. You see, uh, when some people bring the example, like, uh, they are to call an Arab side of you know, for Sudan. They are going to call an Arab side of you know, for Sudan, which is not, <laughs> which is not, which is not correct. We have been with them. Yet why they did not take over South Sudan when they were the one the rulers they were having that power you see it is only two years now we have become independent but for the rest of 50 years we have been under their rule and they were unable to what to take over the south or to Arabize us or to Salamai us why do they do it now when we become a sovereign country having all our powers in our hand I don't really understand unless okay if the next generation which will do that that it is their own weakness. Who is to blame? If this country now is to be taken over by any other person after it is being liberated, who is to be blamed? Is that generation who should not take to protect his own country? Here it is. And of course you have to protect it from now onward. Whose responsibility is our responsibility all? It's not the responsibility of the president or the negotiating team or the ministers or the governors. It is the responsibility of every citizen to protect this nation. This is still talk to the people. We are talking to the governor of Lex State, Engineer Chol Tong. We are looking at issues concerning the state and also, of course, the Addis Ababa Agreement signed on 27th of September. So when oil production was, was shut, uh, there was a lot of sensitization of the people, especially in the grassroots level, uh, at the state level. Uh, and it seems like when this agreement was signed, there has been no much sensitization. What are you going to do to sensitize the people on this agreement? Yeah, I think that's the reason we came here. Uh, all the ten governors were called by the president uh, to come and brief them uh, about the agreement. I said that we go to state and brief the public. That was the reason. Uh, now the assembly is also briefed, uh, and I think that this is what is going on as we speak. Uh, so when we go back, we will go and brief the executive, the all constitutional soldiers, all the civil society will brief them. But what happened uh, is that 
uh, the forces who were against the, 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 the agreement are the first, first people who, who, were, who went out to the media first, before, the, <laughs> before the, even the agreement was announced to all. This is what happened. So, uh, and they were really given the, the biggest space in the media. You see, they were given the uh, biggest space in the media. So it is the opinions where you, which were had <laughs> before the agreement was disseminated. Uh, to the people. That's what happened and that's why it was seen as if this agreement is a bad agreement. And I think this now it is what is happening. Uh, as you have seen now, the, the, the voices are coming down. You see, uh, the voices are coming down. And even I have to say, even in the, 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 our media, uh, the, 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 the government media did not do a big role in, 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 in disseminating the, 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 uh, the agreement itself. You see, it was slow in doing it. And, and, and that was the, the, the issue. And I think people will really understand. Uh, as you know, sometimes, now I'm speaking in English uh, and in the TV. How many people, about, how many uh, people in, in South Sudan who, uh, who speak English and who listen to English and who have TVs? Even if you take the, <laughs> even in Juba here, it's a very small portion of our population. And that's where our problem is. You see, the issue, what language should we use for passing uh, information to the grassroots. It is what really we have to, to look into. This is where this uh, FM radios are to be done. And of course, there is a need of even Sound Sudan TV to be extended to cover all the Sound Sudan. So that a, a local person there, like now, and the prisons come and make a press uh, a statement in the, in, the national, in the TV. How many people listen to it? Very few did. You see, very few. This needs to, to, to be extended. Now, uh, Arab Juba should be extensively used because at least is the is the is the is the language which many people are <laughs> do speak with. At least all the those who are in urban towns, in all South Sudan, they speak uh, Arab Juba. You see, apart from the uh, those who are in deep in rural areas, uh, the one who do not uh, neither Arab Juba <laughs> nor English. These ones, of course, these were also we have to use the local languages uh, uh, using Marai FM. And I think later on we'll see whether the TV also uh, at the state level, whereby uh, some messages must be uh, given through the local by through the local languages, so that the population listen. You see, it is something we have to look at seriously. The the method, the means of passing information to to the vast majority of the, of the population. Okay, uh, another thing is that uh, the state, uh, late state, is uh, to host uh, the anniversary of the independence of South Sudan, the independence celebration next year. How far? Uh, you are right. In fact, uh, that's why it's one of the reasons why I've remained here after the, after the briefing. Uh, I'm spending some days here for follow-up. Uh, yes, those 30 majors have affected uh, uh, are affecting it uh, so much because there are some infrastructure which are supposed to be uh, to be done before the before the celebration. Uh, this is what I'm following up, like the airport, the roads, accommodation, uh, uh, stadium, uh, so forth. Uh, we are working on it, and uh, it is what I'm following up, and we hope. Uh, will be able to uh, to meet the deadline if things go well how about the private sector what 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 are the private sectors doing or what should they do at least to help the state prepare for the independent celebration next year yeah in fact the private sector uh, in the state there is not that uh, uh, we don't have a strong private sector in the state as you know now everything is considered in Juba. The private sector is all here in, uh, in, in base in Juba, uh, and the state in to some extent really have been neglected, and, 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 and no one, uh, even our national uh, private uh, sector men are not willing to go and, and invest in the, in, in, in the state. Uh, and of course now that they, they don't see money, because the, so one will fear to reach his or her money uh, before uh, uh, he's going to get his payment because as so many uh, businessmen have uh, debt with the government you see uh, so the engagement is not yet there but as soon as they will see that things are moving 
and of course also it is my is my chance also here to appeal to them to our national private sector has to come forward uh, to come and best in, 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 in the state for this uh, celebration someone should put up hotels some buildings for the for the for the uh, for the celebration because that is going to give to, to, to bring money there is also a lot of fish in, in lakes and <laughs> yeah. if somebody can invest in that area. Yeah. But uh, finally, what could be your last message, especially on this independence celebration? It's not far now, it's very near actually. Yeah, we are left with a few months. Uh, my last message is that uh, I need uh, uh, all the uh, those businessmen again uh, to come forward uh, to come and invest in lakes and to come and see opportunities of investment which are there. We have land in town in prime areas and we have some other businesses like uh, the fishers we have set uh, help. We, I also uh, call upon the people of Lake State uh, to maintain of course peace and security uh, because uh, if you are going to host such a national uh, uh, occasion uh, it needs the country to be, I mean, uh, it needs the state to be peaceful because we are going to receive uh, foreign uh, foreigners, the presidents from other countries in the country, and all the 10 states are going to, to be there. Uh, also, uh, the other states, uh, in fact, will uh, be inviting them because we would like to make it uh, to have a folklore of all the 10 states. In that when we are going to set up the uh, the committee, uh, I will call upon the each state to come up at least with one folklore, that is our traditional uh, folklore to be represent to be representing each each state because we are not owning it as a legacy state. We need the participation of all other ten states. So if uh, next time going to be done in the other state, we can do the same because it is our independent as a whole country. It is only the location which is a uh, Rumbek legacy state. So I appeal to all uh, those who would like to help, uh, and also the uh, uh, our uh, our artist. Uh, I appeal to them that uh, they have to practice if they could uh, come up with a song, a national song which should be sung that day. Uh, of course, we are going to write to them officially, so that uh, those who are going to win it, that should be the opening a song, a national song, which really uh, matches with the, with the occasion. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah.